Hey guys, welcome back to D-Ray Fishing. Today we're going to talk about the Garmin units I'm running, but in particular the Live Scope. Um, you've probably seen it in some of my videos in the past, and I don't really ever talk about anything until I start, kind of start figuring it out because I don't want to be one of those blabbering idiots that's talking about something he don't know about. So my trolling motor, y'all are fixing to see it, looks like a I don't know. I call it an AR-15. It's got so many gadgets on it, it's unreal. It really looks like an assault rifle. It's got so many attachments on it. I need to add a picnic rail or something so I can slide stuff on and off. But no, in all serious, live scope is something that's really, really cool that Garmin's come out with. And you're not going to find that much information about it because a lot of people still figuring it out. So... I'm going to include this video and we're going to talk about some of the other stuff, but let's get right into it. All right, so here we go. So a little bit about my setup. I'm running two of the Garmin 1042 XSVs. The reason I'm running these units versus what you see mostly people talk about is the 7610s, the 7612s. Is the 7610 and 12 is touchscreen. So, you know, you can touch your screen, do whatever with it you want to. Uh, navigate through stuff and it does make it a whole lot easier um, I'm running the 1242 at my console I've also got a low rent still on there just because Garmin still hadn't come out with some good mapping yet um, but I did hear a rumor that they've bought out Navionics so hopefully here pretty soon we'll be able to incorporate both of them that's why I still got my low rents unit on it so if I get somewhere that Garmin hadn't quite got mapped out yet like my likings I'll use the low rents but as far as their normal mapping, I mean, just about everything in there. It's normally when you get into some shallow bays and stuff that, that I have some issues with, with where channels is and, and the deeper ditches and stuff like that, just trying to navigate navigate through there. So, so here we go. I got two 1042 XSVs. Got the 1242 XSV back there. A lot of the stuff you'll see, like I mentioned, earlier with the, the electronics from Garmin and stuff. Most of the guys are going to be running the 7610s and the 7612s, which is the touch screen, you know. I prefer to get away from that for two reasons. When I started reviewing, buying this stuff, I spent a lot of money on all this stuff, so I started reviewing it. And with these type units, it's not touch screen. I can't do anything with the screen. So it keep, keeps my screen nice and pretty. I don't get all the smudges and nastiness and all that stuff on it. Um, but the biggest thing with me was the processor that's in these units versus the touchscreen units. They're a lot quicker because they're not touchscreen. Um, and you can find some more reviews on this stuff elsewhere, but it's pretty much, you know, you've got your short key, cut keys here. You navigate it with all this stuff. It's got the dial on it. You can zoom in, zoom out really easy, um, just like you could with touchscreen. But the processor is so much faster. I don't know if y'all have ever noticed it or not with a touchscreen, but it, it, the processor is slower because it's always waiting on you to touch. So when you touch, sometimes you'll notice, like if you, if you pull up your navigation, your mapping system, it's like there's 10 seconds there. It's not instantaneous. And I know they're, they're getting a lot fa faster with the newer units and stuff, but when, when I'm ready to switch, I'm ready to see what I'm switching to. So with this, you know, I'd hit like the menu page, I'd scroll over to see what I wanted, hit select, and boom, it's there. I mean, it's instantaneous. I do not have to wait on it to pull up what I'm wanting to see. So that's a really cool thing about these 1042 XSVs. You don't get the touch screen, which sometimes it, it does suck and it, take, it, it takes a while to get used to because I've always had touch screen. So I'm always touching, trying to get it to do something, but I'm really starting to get used to it. Um, navigating the, the shortcut keys is, is really a big, big help because I have eight up here. So I can pretty much do everything I want to do with just those shortcuts and I'm not going through stuff and, and trying to find what I want that way. I've pretty much got everything memorized. So. These are cool units and I recommend looking into them. Um, like I said, the touchscreen units are cool. They're, they're easier to navigate, but once you get used to this system, it's like back in the old day, I really prefer this over the touchscreens. Anytime in the past, I've always had one, but knowing that they've come out with the live scope and stuff like that, I want two units. So normally I'll be running pan optics on this one all the time. Um, this is the PS31. This is the pan optics. Panoptics transducer and like I said, there's a lot on this trolling motor a lot going on But this is the forward shooting Panoptics 
Um, I'm sure y'all have all seen the video on it. Um, seen a lot of info on it. Um, it's, it's a forward shooting sonar. It's kind of a live sonar. Um, caught a lot of fish with it. So on the secondary unit, um, most of the time I'm just normal fishing. I've got this on panoptics and I'll have this on map, maybe even traditional sonar. Um, what I like to do a lot of times when I get in an area where I know there's some fish is I'll run panoptics on this and I'll kick live scope on, on this. And what live scope does, and the transducer is the cool part. This is what I really love about it. But what the live scope is, is it's like, it's kind of like down imaging or forward imaging, but it's live. You can actually see the fish, see how they're relating to your bait. Though you can see on the panoptics, I mean, you can really see what these fish are doing. I, I played with it with a drop shot some, and you can actually watch the fish swim up, nose down on your drop shot, and tell if they're interested or not. You can't do that with 2D sonar. You'll, you'll see the fish go down, it looks like they're going to attack it, like you're fixing to get a bite, and then nothing happens. It's like the fish kind of disappears. The pan optics, you can kind of see similar things, but the fish can go down and you really can't see what's going on. With the live scope, you see a live image. You can see the, your worm, you can zoom in to your drop shot worm, and you can actually see that fish swim around your bait and see how it's acting to it. Um, we, like I said, we played with a drop shot, had some fish just run up on it, that nose down on it, and then you'd kind of see them swim away. You could pick it up, pick it up about a foot off the bottom, and you turn their attention back to it, that swim up, nose down on it, and then they were just, they'd either bite it at that point, or you can kind of watch them swim away. You know they're not interested in it. They're interested, but they're not willing to bite. So that's when you change it up. You change colors, you change your worm style and stuff like that. Figure out, it's going to help you figure out what those fish want exactly. Because you know they're there, you still see them swimming around it, they're just not willing to bite that thing. So let's talk about the transducer. Okay, this is, like I said, this is my Panoptics. This is a PS31. Um, this has got some really cool features in it with the scanning technologies and all that stuff. I won't get into that. Y'all can look that up. Um, but th that's really cool to use for just kind of scanning around, especially when you're on schooling fish and you lose a school, you can turn the scanning technology on and it will locate that school for you. All right. So of course, I got the HydroWave on here. Got a grass gator on here. Um, this is pretty cool. If you're fishing Gunnersville and Chickamaugas, what we fish, you get into the grass, this blade will actually rotate by this and cut a lot of those big clumps off. And I have a lot of problems with that because I have a bunch of junk on here and I get not just one clump of grass around the shaft, I get clumps all over all this stuff. So this kind of helps me cut a lot of that stuff off because without it, I can't even pick the trolling motor up if all this stuff's coated in grass. It's kind of crazy. So this is a 2D sonar. This comes built into the Ultrax. But this right here, this is a live scope. And what it's doing, if, if y'all can kind of see, is it's shooting kind of at a downward forward angle. So what I'm able to do is shoot forward, kind of like the PS31. I'm shooting out in front of the boat. So I can see those fish long before I get up to them. Um, so what, what's really cool and unique about this is if, if I get over brush or something where I really want to focus on, on down below my boat, I'm drop shotting and stuff. I lift this trolling motor up out of the water. I grab this and I just give it a turn like that. And now it's shooting directly down my boat. So that's really, really cool that Garmin come up with that attachment where you can just, you can move it down with more of an angle or you can shoot it straight down below the, tr the trolling motor and actually see what's going on right below the trolling motor. That's really cool. I kind of wish the Panoptics was like that, um, where you could just easily turn it straight down and fish with it that way without having to have two transducers. But this is really cool about live scope and I really, really love that. So we'll go up under the console now and I'll kind of show you some tips and tricks that maybe you don't know about that that's really cool. All right, so we're back here at my console. Um, I chose to mount all my stuff where it's visible, where I can see it. You get a lot of indicator lights that's telling you that everything's working properly. If something was not to be working properly, these units down here, and this is a mess, I apologize guys. I gotta get up under there and vacuum, but I've been installing some new stuff and all. 
and this is just the nastiest place on a boat anyway. The wind kind of turbulates everything up under there and all that stuff. But anyway, so you get indications on this unit and this unit. There's lights that flash. So if something was not to be working, you can really easily troubleshoot just by those lights. You know, you get red flashes, red pulses. You can count the pulses between the brake and actually tell what's not working with it. I think that's really cool. So you don't have to go into tearing into all this stuff because it's a lot of stuff. Now, what I've seen is a lot of guys will mount this. This comes with the live scope. It's how the live scope operates. It has the, the uh, transducer that mounts into it and it has to have its own power um, along with the transducer itself. So a lot of guys will take that and they will mount it up on the front of their boat somewhere. I didn't like it. I, I didn't want to do it. There was not enough room up under my bow to do it. So some guys will, you know, they'll come out here in their rod box or something like that. I wanted to mount it up under here. So I got to talking to Garmin. I'm like, you know what, if it's gonna be back here, what I would like to do is I would like to be able to sit and ride around in some of these places and have it tied into my big unit back here. So if, if, I, if I'm coming into a place and I wanna use live scope, or vice versa, I wanna use pan optics. I want them tied into this unit here where I can run up on there. I see fish schooling, something like that. I can actually drop my trolling motor and kind of ride around into those places and actually see what you see up there back here as well. So I can kind of go in, navigate a place rather than using side imaging and stuff like that. I can actually forward shoot all that stuff, kind of get all the information I want to run up, pull the trolling motor up, and leave if I don't like it. So the way you do that is I bought, when I bought these units, I bought the high definition side imaging. It's an option. When you go to buy your transducer, what type of transducer you want, I went with the high def system. And this is kind of like a motherboard for all the units to tie into. So instead of running just my live scope on the front units. I pulled it back here. I've tied it into this system and it automatically puts it to all, all units. So I can pick which one I want to use up front. I can run it back here on my big one and vice versa. If I'm up front, I want to see side imaging. I don't have to have a side imaging transducer on my trolling motor. I've got one in the back of the boat. I can pull side imaging up on those things too. So that is really, really cool. And I highly recommend you, you look into that because it gives you every option that you have on your boat at any unit that you have in your boat. Not just, okay, I've got side imaging back here. I've got my traditional sonar back here. I've got down imaging. I've, I've got it everywhere. I've got pan optics on this. I've got live scope on this and vice versa. I have, I have side imaging, down imaging, all that stuff up there on those units. So I highly recommend looking into that. And something that's really cool that I normally don't tell people is I like fishing docks. I like locating fish. I like locating structure around docks. And this makes it very, very simple. A lot of times, and you can, you, I mean, everybody knows you use side imaging to do this. So a lot of times when you're looking under shallow docks, the side imaging won't quite pick up what you're wanting to see. However, the live scope, I can actually see exactly what's up under those docks. Panoptics, I can see what's up under those docks. So what you do is by putting this high definition motherboard in, it kind of routes everything everywhere. Like I said before, I can run up, run in a cove, run up there, drop my trolling motor, point it towards the left, point it towards the right, and actually watch on my big unit back here and actually see what's up under those docks. So I was just gonna drop some of that information. You're gonna see a lot of stuff coming through with live scope. Um, now that I've kind of started figuring it out, we're gonna start doing some videos about it, especially when we get around some of these 
these fish where you can sit down and do a good video about it. So I hope y'all like this video. Like I said, I'm not sponsored by Garmin. I chose to go with Garmin. I think they're ahead of the curve. And I think this, the new and innovative stuff they're coming out with is just above the rest. So I'm not sponsored by them. I, I paid out of my pocket for all this stuff, just like everybody else would. So I'm not recommending them because I'm sponsored by them. I'm recommending it because I love it. I absolutely love it. I love the whole system. I love everything I've got set up down here. I mean, it's just, oh, it's gonna help me so much in finding these fish and figuring out what's going on so much quicker. It's gonna, it's gonna save a lot of that homework time. So you guys check this out. I hope you like it. If I can answer any questions for you, I'll be glad to do that. Just drop it in the comments below.